Hi all and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Dr. Joanne Yanez. I'm the Executive Director for the Association of Accredited Naturopathic Medical Colleges. Uh, we are going to be having some amazing students talking to us today about their journey, about what is going well, things that they knew uh, prior, things that they hoped they would learn, and uh, just really excited to have our students join us. Uh, before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping things. So everyone is in listen-only mode. Um, we ask that you use the Q&A function for uh, any questions that may come up during the course of the talk, uh, just because it's easier for us to track uh, what's been answered and, and make sure that all of your questions are getting answered. The forum is being recorded, so if you miss something or you want to go back to something later, uh, hang tight and we will have a recording sent out to you. And then any issues or questions that come up either during or afterwards, please always know that you can email us at info at at aanmc.org. And so with that, uh, we're going to get started. Uh, just a reminder, this is a webinar for educational purposes only. There's no continuing education. Uh, and so uh, we're going to get started talking about naturopathic medicine and naturopathic medical school. So everybody here uh, is in attendance at one of the accredited naturopathic medical colleges across North America. Um, I know why I joined the naturopathic profession, and we're going to hear from all of them as to uh, what they are uh, why, what drew them to naturopathic medicine. Um, I know for me, the therapeutic order was really vital in understanding how NDs address patient care, uh, typically working toward the root cause, understanding disease and dysfunction, and getting higher up with pathology uh, and suppressing pathology at the very top. That would be things like drugs and surgery. But I think most of the NDs that we hear from are really excited to use medicine that um, supports the body, supports healing, and supports prevention. And so that's really where, uh, where this this type of medicine thrives. Uh, I know the six principles of naturopathic medicine are something that many people really feel re resonate with them. And this unifies naturopathic doctors across the globe. So we're gonna talk all about the different courses the NDs are taking, the curriculum and so on. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of jump through uh, some of these and get to our panel. So with us today, uh, we have panelists from Bastyr, CCNM, NUHS, NUNM, and Sonoran. Uh, I'm just going to call on each of you if you could just uh, quickly introduce yourself, where you're at, and what, what year in the program you are, or if you've recently graduated. So uh, I'm just going to start uh, alphabetically here. Chris Kirsten? Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Kirsten Unker. Um, I graduated from Bastyr, the California ca campus, um, in June of this year, actually. Um, and I did the five-year program because um, I got also a master's in counseling at the same time. Um, so yeah, I'm in San Diego currently. And yeah, just graduated. Congratulations on graduation. CCNM. Um, Andrea is joining and we'll okay. be hopefully ready to share in a moment. Okay, perfect. We'll go over to NUHS. Hi everyone, I'm Kimberly Reed. I'm at NUHS in Lombard, Illinois, in a suburb outside of Chicago. I'm in my third year, about to enter fourth, so I'm in clinical internship right now. And uh, Liz. Hi everyone, I'm Liz. I'm over in Portland, Oregon I'm at NUNM. I'm in my fourth out of four years, so just started all my primary rotations and getting through that right now. And then, oops, David. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dave James. I'm a third year medical student at uh, Sonoran University down in Tempe, Arizona, formerly SCNM. And uh, I'm a third year, like I said, clinical. Um, right now I'm in Seattle for some clinical preceptorships over the next couple of weeks. Excellent. So uh, we can just start and jump in uh, with telling us a little bit about your journey, how you became an ND student, and how you knew this was the right path for you. We'll start with Kimberly. Hi, everyone. So for me, I grew up in Jamaica for 19 years. And there, you know, naturopathic medicine is essentially pretty normal for us. We use herbs, we um, use the most least invasive way of treating patients there. So that was always a normal thing for me. I moved to New Jersey at age 19 to pursue an MD uh, degree. And, and then I started doing some shadowing 
um, of other MDs. I also met with some patients who I learned were on some tough times with opioid addiction and just addiction to many medic medicines. And that made me realize the importance of just treating the whole patient, not just their symptoms. So with that, I obtained a bachelor's in cell and molecular biology at Kane University in New Jersey. And I took a two years off because I just wanted to understand what I really want to do. Is it that I want to become a medical doctor and essentially not really treat the whole patient or do I want to actually treat people? That's always what I aspire to, to be a healer essentially. And so I did some research and um, found out about naturopathic medicine. I realized that it really very much aligned with my beliefs, what I believe medicine should be. Um, I did my research in terms of schools. You know, we have um, a few schools in the United States. Um, I lived in New Jersey, so I wanted to be as close to family as possible. Unfortunately, the Bridgeport campus had closed down at the time when I started looking into schools. So um, then I looked at to Illinois, which was the next closest thing to me. I fell in love with the campus. I really appreciated their anatomy lab. Their cadaver lab is beautiful. And I liked that they um, also do DC, um, doctor of chiropractic, as well as AOM, acupuncture and oriental medicine. So that meant I would be working integratively with other students and doctors. So that's really what stood out to me, but um, that's what got me on my ND career. And now I'm here. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Liz. Um, yeah, I grew up on the East Coast in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I went to Virginia Tech for undergrad. While I was at Virginia Tech, we have like an all student run um, like EMT squad group, as we called it. So I had some experience as an EMT in undergrad um, and working with patients that I mean, so a lot of like emergencies, but then also a lot of patients that were being transported to like their dialysis appointments and things like that. And talking to those patients and like understanding how they got where they are and realizing there was a huge role for prevention in those cases and patient education. Um, so I really wanted to emphasize that in my medical career, which is when I heard about um, the naturopathic doctor routes that really stood out to me, those principles there. And so I continued to pursue that idea and then was really excited to move to Portland, Oregon, live on the West Coast for a bit. So that's kind of how I ended up out here. Thank you, Dave. Um, so I'm a little different, I guess, in my approach. We're all unique with the duties of naturopathic medicine. Um, I did my undergrad at the University of Bridgeport in Connecticut. That's where I was first kind of exposed to naturopathic medicine. I was a student athlete and I um, kind of stumbled over with some injuries to the free healthcare system there. Um, so that got me really interested at the time. I was finishing up all my allopathic um, requirements. Um, and then I um, had a chance after college to um, participate with some long distance running and stuff for Team USA. So I'm just, I just kind of came back into the, the school thing a little later in life. And the reason I chose um, Sonoran University, FDNM at the time out in Arizona was I, I wanted to train to the um, broadest scope of practice that I thought was available at the time in Arizona seemed to fit that bill. I also was living a little north up in Flagstaff, Arizona. So it was a much easier transition during COVID to um, get down to uh, Tempe, Arizona. Thank you. And uh, Kirsten. Hi, yeah. Um, so I was always really interested in um, entering the medical world. And um, I grew up in Houston, Texas, where I had very little to no exposure to alternative medicine, complementary medicine of any type. Um, so I was on the pre-med track during my undergrad, and I was at at the time I was volunteering at a hospital and um, shadowing an oncologist and then also working at a hospice at the same time. Um, and my experience volunteering at the hospice and seeing how much more there was to medicine than what I was seeing in the hospital and working with the oncologist and how important just seeing the whole person was and the emotional side of medicine and really focusing on quality of life with patients was really important to me too. Um, and so with that, I started doing some research, um, found naturopathic medicine, shadowed and met with some naturopathic doctors and was just so inspired by um, the medicine I was seeing. And then I really never looked back after that. So that's how I got here. Thank you. And I see Andrea has uh, joined. 
Andrea, we're on the first question. Uh, just briefly tell us about how you came to be an ND student. Thank you so much, uh, Joanne. Sorry, I'm working also at the trade show, so I had to run back and forth um, today. But uh, yeah, so a little bit about me. Uh, I was uh, completing my undergrad in biomedical science and toxicology. And, you know, I was really set on pharmacy school for the longest time. And with that, um, you know, I also started working as um, a microbiologist. So I got a lot of lab exposure. And from there, I kind of knew I wanted to go into healthcare, but overall, like my own health journeys brought me to naturopathic medicine um, through many of you as well, from, you know, being chronically ill and finding, you know, solutions that are sustainable and like long-term you know, more effective because um, I just, I agreed with the approach a lot more versus, you know, taking, um, prescriptions for support. And then from there, uh, I worked at a wellness clinic in downtown Toronto a couple of years. And then I finally, when I um, decided to apply to CCNM, I, you know, I fell in love with so many more modalities in naturopathic medicine that I knew even were around, such as um, TCM and all the botanicals. Uh, and I'm hoping, uh, sorry, is this the next question? Do I answer the next question as oh, well? No, no, you, you can okay. you fit, wrap up on this one. Thanks. That is all. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So uh, we'll go back up to uh, Kimberly. So tell us a few tips uh, that you think you need to succeed as an MD student, both academically and personally. Definitely. Um, my first tip, and this is something I really wish someone would have told me, is to get organized. Um, I was not, probably not very organized before. This definitely lit something under me. So I, whether it's a planner, um, a little notebook, um, a calendar, that's something I have. I have a huge calendar that I can write my whole week, my day, everything on. Um, so yeah, just get organized, um, make friends because you definitely will need support, especially when you move away from home. I left from New Jersey where my family is to come to Illinois where I knew no one. So it's just really good to have that support, that community here at school. And lastly, make time for yourself. Definitely get some TLC. Even if it's one day of the week, make some time, personal time for you, because this can be a very overwhelming program, especially if you're not near family and friends. So just make some time for yourself to take care of you. Thank you. Uh, Dave. Um, yeah, I totally agree with what Kimberly said um, about getting organized. I think that if, if you put the time in ahead of time before your semester quarter in school to like go through your syllabus, put your due dates and stuff into like a little calendar, it doesn't eliminate the stress, but it cuts down on, on some of your stress. Um, we're on a quarter system, so we do like 10 weeks of school, a week of finals, and then we get this um, two-week break. Um, so I think that helps me throughout my, uh, I think I'm going into like my 11th quarter so it's been like a couple of years of like just having some sort of like um balance also um you know i try and take at least 24 hours off each weekend um so i think that's important just to go out and do whatever it is that your passions are for me you know it's being outside getting nature um you know, doing stuff that's not really school related for at least a day kind of reset you. It's a, it's a grind. It's a full-time job. And like, I wish someone, um, maybe I wish I would have gone to one of these and someone would have told me how, how much of a, a commitment this is. It is like a 40 plus hour a week full-time job to get into this profession and to do the work to be a, a safe, competent doctor. Thank you. Uh, Kirsten. Yeah, definitely um, reiterate everything that Dave and Kimberly said. Um, another thing that I think can be helpful, um, as they said, it's it's such a grind. And so there's a lot there's a lot to do all the time. And so one of the things I found helpful was finding ways to kind of integrate different parts of yourself into your studying, if that makes sense. So maybe you're really creative. Um, so, you know, draw, you know, draw the anatomical structures or um, maybe you're really social. So, you know, 
studying a group. So finding different parts of yourself to kind of integrate into your studying to help you um, be more connected and more resilient as you keep going through school, I think is really important. And um, with this, similar to what Kimberly said, just it's a long process. So remember to take breaks and to really give yourself that self-care. It's for your minimum and it's grueling the whole time and you're going to have to be able to keep going. So really give yourself those breaks when you need it. It's not going to be helpful to keep studying and studying and studying and studying when your brain can't take anymore. So just remembering to take breaks too. Thank you. Yes. It, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, Liz. Definitely agree with like what everyone is saying so far very much matches with my experience. I'm I found it very helpful. Like we, I think we talked about like having a friend group, like establishing that early on. I think it's also really helpful to be involved in the community in general. So like, you know, joining clubs, starting a club, like being a part of like other things outside of the classes is really helpful to kind of feel like a sense of belonging. And then also like pursuing your interests outside of like what you're currently learning in that class, I think can be very rewarding. Um, And then with that too, I think uh, establishing relationships with your teachers early on is really great. And like having office hours, being able to go there and like ask your additional questions and things like that is really helpful. And definitely staying on top of the self-care. The one thing that I have really prioritized since starting school is just like, I get a workout in some type of movement every day and I sleep. Like I definitely don't skimp on my sleep. I just need that. So whatever that is for you, like being able to have that every single day, I think is really important. Thank you. And Andrea. Uh, Yeah. So just kind of also um, piggybacking based off um, everybody's shared experiences. Um, I do say burnout um, could be quite common, especially like as you're transitioning. So as long as you're making sure you have time to prioritize um, your well-being, but as well as um, your academic responsibilities, don't put too much on your plate um, as well. I know everyone's always really busy. Like I do recommend joining as many clubs as possible, but in terms of like extra extracurriculars and work, uh, definitely it's important to find a good balance. And then at the end of the day, like remember that like you're in school now, um, you have your whole life ahead of you to work. So that's like kind of good advice I wish I was taking because I was always like, no, I need all the part-time jobs I can get and all the experience, but I mean, there's plenty of time for that. So I think school should be, you know, a big focus, but also of course, like the self-care. I mean, it doesn't have to be dedicating a whole day of the week just for like self-care, but at least like one day off where you can actually say you've turned your mind off. Um, For me, like my experience was a lot like during the pandemic. So the online school um, does get to you. So, you know, just doing things like keeping It's very hard to like make it, but keeping like your laptop away, you know, minimizing screen time before you're going to bed just to really relieve yourself of all of that um, is really beneficial. And then with keeping track of everything, um, there's so many great apps out there. Um, But as well, like if if you're more of like a calendar person or like an agenda, I personally am an agenda person because I'll snooze whatever reminders I have and forget about them. So just kind of figuring out what strategies work for you um, was really beneficial. Awesome. Angela, can you, or I'm sorry, Andrea, can you also maybe share if there was something that you wish you had known prior to starting school? Um, Yeah, I would say, um, you know, you're there because you want to be there. So don't take any failures and hardships very personally. Like they do work out if, like I've seen, I've everyone struggled, but I've seen like many firsthand as well, but also from like experience. But I know like if I really, you know, if I'm really putting in the work and the effort, like the results will come. So don't beat yourself up with all the small difficulties. Like if you want to be there, you will be there. No one's going to be kicking you out or, you know, really trying to challenge you academically more than needed. Good, good advice. Uh, there was a quick question, actually. Uh, is CCNM on semester or trimester? Uh, yes, yeah, so we're on semester. So we Thank have you. the fall and the spring. And then the summer is only dedicated if you're an IMG program and you're kind of transitioning between. So you'll do like a three-year instead of the four-year program. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, anyone else want to share their biggest challenges uh, or what you wish you had known prior to starting school? Um, if I were to share anything about what I wish I'd known prior to school, I would just say you're going to grow and change faster than you ever thought was possible. So just be open-minded and be ready for that because it is four years, but you pack a lot into those four years. Thank you. Anyone else want to jump in on this one? Um, sure. Um, something I wish I had done or known before was to just get involved with um, NMSA, that's the Naturopathic Medical Student Association. I'm currently the chair in uh, of the Chicago chapter, and I just wish I had gotten involved with them. You know, just coming to this program, it felt very lonely, not getting some answers or getting some questions answered. And once I did start going to the conference, getting involved with that org, I had a lot of questions answered. It definitely helped um, shine a light for me. So if you have any questions just before coming to school, look up the NMSA, Naturopathic Medical Student Association. We have different chapters in different states and along with different schools, and you can reach out to them and they can answer some questions for you as well. Thank you. Yeah, one one area that I'll just chime on to that, Kimberly, is uh, I highly recommend starting to look for mentors early on, starting to network, whether it's at NMSA or attending conferences. If you're interested in a specialty organization, start going to the conferences, start meeting doctors, start asking if they would you know, consider having you preceptor them or meet for virtual Zoom tea or something like that. It doesn't have to be complicated, but starting to make those connections with doctors early on um, will be really helpful. You're going to need letters of recommendation. You're going to potentially Potentially need to have folks standing up for you when you're looking at residencies or other job opportunities. So um, it's really helpful to have that in, in mind and also to start to, you know, explore how you want to use the degree. What do you want to do with it? Do you want to work full time? Do you want to, you know, maybe have it look a little bit different? Where do you want to work? And so really starting to hone in on what your game plan is for graduation, for post-graduation um, and working yourself toward there. So, you know, you don't, you don't get a, a, a surprise, you know, right, right. Just prior to getting your diploma, like, oh, shoot, what do I do now? Like, you know, really start planning for that early on, thinking about it, finding things you like, finding things you don't like. It's important to know both. So uh, that that would be another area that I would just recommend and, and chime into what's already been shared. Does anyone else want to share uh, regarding this question? I think someone had their hands up. Hey, we can move on. So what does a typical week look like for you? Uh, Liz, why don't you kick us off on this one? Right now I'm uh, doing my clinical rotation. So I have four different shifts a week. Uh, right now on Monday, sorry, Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So my week is a little bit crazy. <laughs> Um, and then I also have a couple of classes. I'm in integrative mentorship right now, as well as grand rounds. Um, and we are in a business series at the moment too. So a lot of classes, a lot of clinic, squeezing in some workouts. Um, I work part-time as a personal trainer. So I'm doing some of that stuff as well. And thank you for sharing that. There was a question, can you work? And we, we can hit that a little bit later as well too. Uh, uh, Kirsten, do you wanna share? what a week looked like <laughs> what it looked like I might actually I since I was on dual track my school my school weeks were a little bit different but I'll share kind of what the typical fourth year student is at best year um so we also have four clinic shifts and um you can be either on campus at our clinic or we also have a variety of off-site shifts which are really cool like um I worked at one that was a free clinic um in a lower income area um we worked I worked at an urgent care um uh, things like that and then we also have a couple of classes on top of that so um, classes like oncology, rheumatology. Um, we also had our business classes, our grand rounds throughout the whole year. So 
Um, mostly um, fourth year is focused on clinic shifts. So you're mostly working, you're seeing patients as a primary physician and um, really focusing on that. But then we did have a couple of classes on the side too. Thank you. Andrea. <clears throat> yep. So uh, right now I'm in my third year. So uh, again, we also enter a clinic at CCNM in our fourth year. But um, up until then, I would say third year um, is definitely the most strenuous at our school, just because we have such a mix of in-personal practicals, but as well as so much content we still have to focus on. So I would say our um, traditional Chinese medicine classes, the most challenging because again, we have all the practicals where we know um, that we have to perform, but also we're diagnosing and prescribing and making treatment plans, but also at the same time, memorizing on the top of your head, all like 100 something acupuncture points that would be like randomly selected for our exam. So that one is very content heavy, um, as well as we also are doing naturopath manipulations. So coming not really from a sports or kinesiology background, I also find that one very intense, but um, you know, the classes are very manageable. So just keeping up um, when I'm not in classes, I do a lot of study groups with friends. Um, I was uh, also president for NMSA at our school. So that did take up a lot of my time last year and I enjoyed so much of the little duties, but I do have a little bit more free time now um, to uh, pursue other things. So right now I'm not currently working, but I mean, I've had um, a lot of part-time jobs in the past, which I found kind of helpful with school balance. Uh, I also do um, you know, a lot of things for me. I go a lot, a lot of dog hikes uh, as well as um, yoga classes. So just trying to keep a balance, but that's basically it for me, just those heavy classes and then a little bit of a downtime. Thank you, Dave. I love this question because I'm just uh, putting together my schedule for October when I get back to school. Um, usually I'll, you know, start the day, take the dog out for a little jog. And then I'll, I like to bike to school. So it's about a half hour. So I get a little exercise. Um, our classes for shift start at 8 a.m. Um, and then, you know, we have a lunch break, um, usually 12 to 1. And there's club meetings and different activities that you can be involved with. And then, um, classes in the afternoon. I do a lot of like, I'm a teaching assistant for the cadaver lab. And I also, now that I'm a third year student in the clinic, um, I spend a lot of time in the Neil Rorden Center for Regenerative Medicine with some of the doctors. So um, the latest I'm on campus, Monday through Friday, is usually our shift at our school. If you're put on one, you could be on campus treating patients till about seven o'clock at night. And then usually bike back home, take the dog out, you know, have some dinner, study for a little while and repeat the next day. Wash and repeat. Uh, Kimberly. Okay, so I'm currently also doing classes online and in person, such as like dermatology, um, women's health, um, emergency medicine. So I'm doing 26 credits this trimester. We do the trimester um, route. So um, just finding that balance. I'm also in internship, just started getting primaries and such. My internship, I do eight hours on Tuesday, on Wednesdays, Thursdays is six hours in the clinic and Mondays four. So it can be a pretty long days. Um, the latest that we're open is 7 p.m. And I live on campus. NUHS has dormitories here. Um, or, or apartments, because I don't, I feel like dorms make it seem like I'm sharing with an, uh, another person. We have apartments here. So um, it's pretty long, but I'll do that. Usually get off, um, do a little bit of reading, just a little bit of studying, whatever I need to cover. Just have to stay organized. I'm also um, a mentor here on campus. So I have a couple of mentees who I reach out to, talk to, and try to just help um, guide them through the program. I do that two times for the week. I'm also the NMSA chapter president here, as well as the NPSA, the Naturopathic Professional Student Association president. So that can take some time out of my days as well. I have to prepare just to get people involved in the club, get members to sign up and such. Um, and also I work part-time as well. So it's that's my typical week. <laughs> it can be pretty busy, but as I said, if you stay organized, it you can do it. Thank you. 
you know, I think uh, I think we we touched on this a little bit. So, uh, Kimberly, unless you have something specific here, I think we'll probably just jump to the next question. Oh, you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I was just saying, what would I tell myself before um, considering or what would I what is some advice I would give someone right now considering the profession? Um, this is a beautiful profession. Um, with people who truly want to heal and believe in this medicine. So I would just do some research prior to coming here. We have some great NDs like Dr. Paul Anderson, Dr. Tori Hudson, Dr. Dirk Powell. These are NDs who have written books, who have um, webinars, who have talks, and they just share um, stories and information about this type of medicine. So if this is just something you want to do more research on just to see if this aligns with you, I would say, you know, Dr. Um, Giannis had talked to you before, you know, reaching out to mentors, just getting an idea if this is this aligns with you. But it's a beautiful profession, and I don't see you <laughs> going wrong with choosing this profession. Thank you. Does anyone else want to jump in on this question? Okay, we shall move on to the next. So uh, Liz, what, or I'm sorry, um, Kirsten, why don't you take this one? Yeah, since I did graduate. Um, so I am working at a private practice in San Diego. Um, it's a doctor that I preceptored under, which is like an internship that you have to do um, while you're in school. Um, and it is a primary care practice. Um, and we also see a lot of like hormones and some cancer care. So I have just, I'm starting there full time October 1st. So that's what I'm doing. Congratulations. Uh, does anyone else have graduation plans yet? No pressure. Well, yes, I do have a plan. After graduation, I would like to start a, get into a residency. So I will be doing the residency route, applying. Um, I want, I'm interested to focus on oncology. So that means I will want to go FABNO and get that fellowship done. So I will be reaching out to different um, intern uh, residency pr uh, program sites like Seattle Integrative Oncology. And um, once that is done, the residency can be two to three years. I will start a practice in New Jersey. So that is my plan after graduation. Excellent, thank you. Anyone else? I'm hoping to move back out to the East Coast, whether that's for a residency or a full-time position. So I'm kind of currently working on developing those opportunities. Thank you. Anyone else want to jump in? Otherwise, uh, we can move on. And the questions are rolling in from the students too. So. Uh, so I have a question for everybody. What is the funniest thing that's happened while you've been an ND student? Does anyone wanna go first? Go ahead. Um, I can just share that I feel like in cadaver lab, a lot of funny things happen because it is just, you're with your classmates and you have like, this is gross in the graphic, I'm sorry, but cadaver lab is just a graphic place to be. Like you have, I just remember so many times like fat going on us and just like leaving that room. We had ours on Friday afternoons. And so you had such a long week and just cadaver lab, we were all just laughing and learning together. And it was just I feel like every time, every day in Cadaver Lab was just a time and you came out kind of delusional and just, it was a great time. <laughs> Anyone else? I agree. Um, I think, oh, sorry. Oh. Go ahead, Kimberly. I was going to say, I agree. I think a lot of funny things happen in Cadaver Lab. Some of my best laughs um, have been in Cadaver Lab. Or as an NUHS, we have... um. We do it like probably three times a week, depending on like you do spine extrem, then head and neck, then viscera. And so you'll be with groups of people and you learn to about new people, you make meet new personalities and they're all just such fun, funny people. You have these body parts flying all over the place. And it's just, I've always had a lot of fun in cadaver lab. <laughs> Andre, I think you wanted to jump in. Uh, yeah, so I'm not cadaver lab, but I mean, I again, with the, our traditional Chinese medicine course, um, I can 
write an essay on all of the moments, but just two on the top of my head was just a few days ago, um, we were doing mock Sebastian. So for those of you who don't won't know, I mean, if you're interested, I can definitely explain later on, but essentially like you are burning uh, some dried up herb extract. And, you know, we were really doing it um, on each other, like as colleagues, and of course, some of it like the little, the ashes or the soot does get into your hair. So I don't think the TA explained enough the potency of the smell. So um, later on that day, because I was around it all day, my nose became so sensitized to it. But I get home, uh, mind you, I had a job interview after. So I went to the job interview, didn't notice anything. I get home at around 8 p.m. and my mom's like, I mean, you know, immediately she's like, someone's been smoking weed in this house. And I'm like, who? Like, she's like, it's you. And I'm like, I was literally at school. So just kind of explaining, you know, all the different herbs that we work with, I found was hilarious. And then the next one would be when we were doing fire cupping in the same practical class, just kind of seeing people's, you know, reaction to an open flame, but also everyone handled it pretty safe. But I will say someone did leave the alcohol cotton swab inside somehow. So then when the fire exposed, basically there was flamethrowers going around in class. So both the same class and believe it or not, it was the same day. So that's why it's very fresh on my memory, but um, everything was all laughs. So that's good. So um, I, I think I laughed most of the way through naturopathic medical school and laughter is a stress reliever. And as the students have talked about, uh, you know, this can be a, a very demanding program. And so one thing that I was always struck with was how uh, how much we relied on each other as a, a family. We sometimes saw our classmates more than we saw our family. And uh, I had some amazingly hysterical people with me. So I, I can't pick out one item specifically, but they were so funny. And if any of you are ever watching, you know who you are. Uh, so we have some questions coming in from the audience. Uh, I will uh, do my best here to uh, throw some of these um, your way. Um, so for those of you considering residency, can you talk about why? Yes. Yeah, um, happy days. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you're go ahead. Okay, I'll go ahead. So I'm considering a residency because I want to um, gather as much expertise and information on patient care in, through oncology as possible. Um, you know, naturopathic oncologists, we work a lot, well, they work a lot with um, integrative healthcare. And I just want to go and see as many patients, see as many cases, gather that information, as well as to become a FAVNA or a fellow in oncology. You have to reach a certain amount of requirements. You have to see a certain number of patients and meet a couple of prerequisites so that you can sit, sit that exam and get the fellowship. So that's really why I wanted to go to residency so I can get the expertise from people out there already doing the job and also meet the requirements I do need for the fellowship in the future. David, David. Yeah, I'm um, right now, I'm considering like applying for a couple residencies across the country. Um, I don't know what the opportunities are as a US citizen to apply for Canadian residencies, but there's a couple that's on my radar. And the main reason for me is that when I get out of here in 14 months, um, pass my NFLEX 2 exam from a doctor, I think I'll be like a state competent doctor, but I think residency is gonna like give me the chance to practice under attendings and people that have been um, practice in medicine, natural of medicine longer. And I feel like to be a good doctor and I want to be the best physician I can be, I think, uh, you know, a two-year residency, if I can land one of those, um, will just make me feel better about the the care that I give to my patients someday. So it's, you know, it's really um, a win-win situation. I think I'll be more competent, but it'll also provide better care for the patients that I'll work with in the future. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone here who is duly enrolled in acupuncture and ND and can speak to that?
No. Um, well, I, I can speak to that a little bit. Uh, I, I was a dual enrollee in acupuncture and naturopathic medicine. Uh, it was very intense. I know that some students who uh, take dual enroll enrollment, uh, I, I believe, as Kirsten had mentioned, will often drop to a five-year plan. And I think that that is a wise uh, wise thing to do if you feel like you you need more time and space. Kirsten, I don't know if you want to talk about the five-year option maybe a little bit. Yeah. So at best year, we have a five-year option just for people who maybe have been out of school for a while and just like want to take a longer time in general, have a lighter course load. And then also if you're dual track, they mandate us if we do two degrees to go to five-year track. So essentially for me, my fourth year was spread out over two years. And um, as Dr. Yanis was mentioning, um, dual degrees are it's intense. It's a lot of hours. It's a lot of time. And so I really recommend if you can, I can't even imagine doing it over four years. It was exhausting over five years and I have no regrets doing it, but it's definitely really intense to get two degrees at the same time, one of which is a doctorate. So just if you're, if the school offers it, I would definitely do five year. Um, it made it a lot more manageable. I can't even imagine doing it in four years. So. Um, so there's a question, uh, did any of you visit all of the campuses prior? Uh, what would be your recommendations with that? I know some people are very focused on one campus. Um, if you're if you're considering other programs, maybe uh, you know that would be advisable. I didn't visit all the campuses um, at the time that I was joining schools it was like coming out of COVID so we kind of had like online um you could just like kind of do an online tour I'm not sure if those are still going on now um but no I I pretty much had um two campuses in mind went to those um went to the online tours and that's how, how I made my decision Um, can, uh, there's a question here. Can anyone touch on the friendships and community that you built during ND school? Uh, so, you know, as somebody concerned about moving to a new place, uh, being away from family, uh, would, would anybody be able to talk to that? I, yeah, I think, well, so like NUNM, they recently started it so you can do your first year online, which I think some people enjoy that flexibility. But I also think in terms of like this question, like there's pros and cons. Like if you do your first year online versus like in person, in person, you're going to be seeing the people that you're working with and like forming those relationships early on. And I think that kind of gives you a leg up in terms of like meeting people, becoming part of that community especially after COVID, so many things were online. So like being able to come back to things in person, I think is really helpful um, for feeling like, oh, I have, I have like a solid group of friends. I have a good community here, especially being far away from home. Like I totally get that. Um, just to continue on that, I felt at best year that we were kind of immediately bonded together. Like you at best year, like my cohort was only 30 people and you're in classes with those people all day, every day. And so you kind of naturally, it's like you, I don't want to say you trauma bond, but you trauma bond a little bit. Like you're naturally all together all the time. You study together. Um, there's always things going on on campus. Um, and most people I think are in that situation where they're moving to a brand new place and you don't have a lot of time. And so everyone's in kind of the same boat, right? Like you guys are all going through this grueling thing together. And so I don't think it should be a big concern. Like it's scary moving to a new place, but I think hopefully at all of these schools, like you're going to be with a whole bunch of people going through the same thing and they're going to become your family. And that's like one of the really cool things about ND school. So uh, there's an addition to this about family and um, did anybody experience, I don't know if anyone is partnered up uh, and willing to share that, but experience challenges with, you know, personal relationships. Um, I do know, and and this person is, uh, writing as an anonymous person, so I don't know who you're who you are. Um, but we have hosted webinars in the past as well 
uh, specifically related to people with families and uh, and children and so on, and how you kind of balance both of those. So if you search for uh, our past webinars, there is one there uh, that uh, that was specifically focused on that issue. Um, and I know it can be stressful. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to share uh, regarding just the interpersonal family relationship type things that come up uh, through school. I'd be happy to tackle that one. Um, so I have a spouse um, and for the first two years of school, um, most of my classes were on like Zoom because of COVID restrictions and stuff. Um, but then as I started coming more and more down to the Phoenix Valley to be on campus, um, we ended up um, being apart for like two weeks at a time. We had two households, one up north where she was working and the little apartment down next to campus. So it was challenging. And, um, you know, we're still together. We're doing great. Um, but there's times that, you know, I'm so excited to talk about all the new like terms that I've learned at school and stuff like that. And I go home at night and, you know, she wants to talk about other things. So there's, it's been ups and downs, but, you know, I don't think I could be here today as a third year medical student without my spouse's support and love throughout this, this whole journey. Um, so it's like any other part of life. So you're really passionate about something, you find a way to make yeah. it make it work. And um, having the support of family yeah. and friends is, is really important in this journey. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share? Um, um, does, oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just going to say it doesn't necessarily apply to me directly, but I just have seen a lot of different family situations within my cohort too, and people moving from other countries and bringing their families with them or making long distance relationships work. And so it just seems like it's a very individual situation, but um, a lot of people kind of find a way to like work it out, if that helps. Uh, there is a question here. Has anybody had a full circle moment as an ND student that you'd like to share? Um, I can speak to this one because I have had so, so many full circle moments um, since my finishing up at best year. Um, I got to be a peer counselor. We have those at best year. It's essentially where you have a fourth year student mentoring you as a first year. And so in my fourth year, I had the opportunity to um, mentor the first year students essentially. And I can just tell you guys like, it is so cool to reflect on how much we grow. I think um, Liz was talking about that earlier, but like, it is so cool to reflect on how much you've grown as a person, how much you've learned. And I think in the beginning, it feels really scary and overwhelming and there's so much to know, but I promise you when you come out of it, you're going to have so many reflections on how much you've developed as a doctor and as a person. And it's really cool. So I had a lot of that this year, getting to talk to the first year students again, but I'm excited for all of you if you choose to go to ND school, because it's really, it's a beautiful thing. So. Um, I had a full uh, full circle moment actually a couple months ago that really warmed my heart. Um, I was at the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians conference and a student uh, came up to me and shared that uh, she had attended one of these webinars a uh, long while back and, uh, and was inspired to go to ND school um, partly due to some of the things that she heard from me. And it was really inspiring to hear that and just to kind of come around and have that that person share that, at, you know, sometimes, and especially as, as physicians, as, as, as folks working, we don't always get a lot of thank yous. And, uh, and so it, it is, it's really cool to see uh, when your work makes a difference and uh, and so that was that was something that was personally touched me and and I was really excited to to hear her story and how she was you know just excited as and and also touched as a Latina to see another Latina doing something and so you know I think that there it, it is important uh, and I know that there was a question uh, regarding diversity it is important for representation it is important to see people that look like you that that 
pray like you, that believe like you, that love like you uh, in, in doing what you want to do. And so I think that while no program or profession is perfect uh, in naturopathic medicine, you will find people who really do embrace uh, and, uh, and, and em embrace kind of in a holistic way, it's not perfect. And, you know, we, we all have our struggles and professionally, I think we have grown a lot, but, uh, diversity is absolutely an area that we're committed to. I actually just came from an event last evening, uh, working on scholarships for underrepresented minorities. And so, you know, th this is, this is absolutely something we're committed to, uh, regarding the, um, diversity component. So I know we are coming up on time here. I'm trying to uh, catch up with all of these questions here. Um, would somebody be able or one or more folks be able to chat about uh, financial aid? I know that several of you work and uh, that that is a common question slash concern of people considering this is how do you afford it? What, what does that look like? I'm scared about debt, like all of those questions that come up. So would anybody maybe be able to talk about that? Well, here at NUHS, um, we off they offer um, scholarships to NDs and DCs and so forth. So those are some opportunities. Also, when I, I also do do some outside scholarships. So I have to go and grind a little bit and do my research on just some additional help, but I also do get financial aid and yes, it can <laughs> accumulate, but um, I'm <laughs> this is just the position I've been put in. But um, there are definitely does some opportunities for you like scholarships, whether at the school, you can also look um, for resources on your own for some outdoor or outside scholarships as well. You can reach out to the school, see what they offer in terms of scholarships, the financial aid office, the student services, they can present you with some, res um, with some resources. And there's a lot of different types of loan repayment programs as well. One of the ones that I'm familiar with is, you know, working for a nonprofit for 10 years after graduation and being able to reimburse the rest of the loans that you owe at that point. So if that's something you might be interested in, like thinking about that ahead of time. Um, I think also similar programs for going into like more underserved areas or rural areas. Um, every state kind of has like different opportunities like that as well. The other thing that I would add to the financial component is be as frugal as you can. Uh, you know, it, it can be very tempting when that big giant financial aid check comes in to say, wow, I'm going to treat myself to something. Just remember that you're treating yourself to something with a whole lot of interest attached to it. And so uh, as, as frugal as you can be while you are living, uh, you know, and, and going through medical education is really important to just be mindful of that because it does accrue. Uh, and I know, you know, I worked uh, a bit during ND school, people work, uh, sometimes there's family assistance. Uh, the, the loan forgiveness is an option for many people. Um, and if you have further questions about any of the finances, please chat with the admissions officers and they can connect you to the financial aid department so that you can better understand. It's just so important to get with a financial aid officer um, and even possibly your own like wealth manager, like understand your, you, this is a, this is an investment and education is an investment and you need to use that investment wisely. And uh, there, there was a doctor who um, I had interviewed a while back and she had paid off all of her student loans in a very short amount of time, uh, but she was exceptionally surgically focused on getting her loans paid off. And she had, she met with a wealth manager. She had an, a, a plan, uh, a clinic growth plan. Like she had everything really ironed out uh, with business plans and spreadsheets and you name it. And, you know, and, 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 uh, and so I think that there, there are a lot of different ways that, you know, you can work on that, but just being very mindful about the loans and your plan on repayment is, is an important thing to keep in mind. Um, 
So with that, I know that we're pretty much at time here. Does anyone else have any last words? I know before we go, I want to make sure that folks are aware of our upcoming events. Uh, we will be hosting an event uh, next, no, oh, this month. We're already, are we in October? No, we're not in October yet. <laughs> next month on um uh, on mental health and uh, and your brain potential and uh, a bit of dementia prevention. And then we're going to have an admissions panel in November. So some of these questions that folks have had about you know various different admissions related things can really be answered uh, during that November panel. So bring those questions to that one as well because that will be really helpful. Um, if you again have any questions for us here at ANMC, you know how to reach us. Uh, so do any of our panelists have any last words before we go? I just want to like wish everyone the best of success. I know it can be overwhelming when you choose to like go down this journey, but it's worth it. It, it totally is all the late nights, early mornings. And when you get to clinic and you see your patient's reaction to some of your treatment plans or a smile or a thank you, or, you know, it, it just, it'll give you goosebumps someday. And if um, this is something you're looking into, I think naturopathic, position in these schools is a it's a great opportunity for you. Well, and thank you to all the panelists. The last thing that I will leave you all with is if you are truly considering a, a health profession career, write down your why. Write down why you were doing this, what is your purpose, what is your motivation? Because I guarantee you there is going to be at least a time or maybe 10 that will come up, that will challenge your why, that will challenge why you are doing what you're doing. Maybe you fail a test. Maybe you have a bad patient outcome. You know, Maybe you get some feedback from a faculty member that is not so positive, You know, that it happens to all of us. And uh, don't let it throw you off. Pull that why out and remind yourself of your purpose, your direction, and what, why you're doing all of the things that you're doing and what your goal, your end goal is. So I, that's just kind of my, I always tell that to folks because I think it is really powerful and valuable uh, to make sure that you don't get off track because it really, you know, life can try and push you off and uh, it can be easy if you're not really grounded in what you're doing to get pushed off a track. So uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, I can stay on for just a little bit more and type out some answers to some of the questions, but I want to say thank you to our panelists. I uh, appreciate you taking some time out of your busy school schedules or work schedule and uh, joining us today. So thank you so very much for joining.